the Ducks played their final home game at the Ponda for this season, and Jakob Silverberg says goodbye to the Anaheim faithful. We'll talk about all that and more on this edition of Locked On Anaheim Ducks. Your Locked On Ducks, your daily podcast on the Anaheim Ducks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to Locked On Anaheim Ducks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, Jason J.D. Hernandez. I've been covering hockey for over a decade, and we're again live at Acrisure Arena. And that's where I was Friday night instead of the pond. And I literally spent the last maybe 40, 45 minutes just going, like, parsing through all the videos, um, just seeing all the stuff happening at the Ponda. And just got to say, sad I missed it, but, you know, good for Jakob Silverberg to get the send-off that he frankly deserved. And I talked about Jakob Silverberg at length in the last show, and this is actually, like, a bonus episode of sorts. This is a weekend podcast, and I am just going to talk about that game, and I want to talk about that game on its own, since there is another game Saturday night. That will take place on Monday. But for now, I just want to talk about Jakob Silverberg. We're going to lead off with Silfie because this was, this was his night. This was all about Jakob Silverberg, who played his final game at the Ponda. This was mentioned on the previous podcast, but Silverberg will be retiring from the NHL this season. Not from hockey, but from the NHL. And the reason I say that is because this quote literally just came out, and I'm glad I waited to record. Uh, This was a quote from Derek Lee. So once again, hat tip to Derek Lee for this one, who just put out this quote literally like a minute ago. From Silfie, quote, I can say... I'm not sure not retiring from hockey. I'm retiring from the NHL, but I'll still play for another couple years. Within the next couple days, it'll be official. Still feel I have something to give and still excited to play, end quote. Hmm, I, I'm guessing that means he's probably going to play in his native Sweden. He's probably going to play another year or two in the Swedish league. Maybe he'll go back to his old team. Who knows? Maybe he'll go back. <laughs> I mean, wouldn't it be something to go back to Bernas? and get the chance going again in front of like his home fans because it has been over a dozen years since Silverberg I mean that's where the chance originated the Ua Silverberg chance originated in Sweden so I imagine that he will go back to his home um, he'll have a nice time in Javla and go from there so that that like just came out good for Silverberg to at least go out on his own terms you never want to see a player that just tries to hang on long and long and too long and and in this case for Silverberg this is legit leaving on his own terms and doing it his way the way he wants to and this wasn't a decision he took lightly I mean he has his kids to think about I mean he has his wife, his kids. That's all taken into account. And he gets to go home to his home country. And this will also allow him to spend more time with his kids. He has mentioned that his kids are growing up. He's got a four-year-old, a six-year-old, one on the way. So this means a lot to him to be able to step away from the National Hockey League at this time and go home. And the treatment that he got after the game, I mean, the Ducks did lose 6-3, but he was named the first star of the game, and rightfully so. Jakob Silverberg has meant a lot to this Ducks team over the past decade plus. And and that's just cool. That's That's just a great thing to see. I mean, yeah, Kadri got a star. Kuzmenko got a star. I mean, Kuzmenko got a hat trick in this game. But like I said, this night was all about Silverberg. And even listening, like I had to get the headphones on, listening to the video as Silverberg took that final lap around the Ponda and he had the crowd sticking around, I heard in the distance, like in my ear, the chants began again. So all y'all in the 400s really got the chant going. We heard it. We absolutely heard it. Love to see it. 
it is a little sad <laughs> that he's going, but I'm also happy for him that he had a solid career in Anaheim. So, you know, I'll give my applause. I'll give my stick taps to Sylphie on on a great career with Anaheim. And I'm, I'm actually legit glad that I got to see him play here at Acrosure Arena in the exhibition game earlier this season. I was really thrilled that I got to announce Jakob Silverberg earlier this year. I mean, that was really cool. And, you know, I'll throw this photo up. Why not? I'll throw this photo up right now. There's a picture of me. <laughs> it's taking up the entire screen, but that's a picture of me in the box. And just a few feet away from me is Jakob Silverberg. That to me is just a really sterling moment. I mean, for me personally, to get two of my favorite like ducks on there, Troy Terry and Jakob Silverberg, in the same photo with me, absolutely freaking love it. Just thought I would share that with you all. So a couple more things that I want to talk about as far as Silverberg. Um, he had no points on this one, but that's okay. Um, he still skated pretty well. Um, from the couple clips that I saw, there were some shifts where it looked like he kind of had a spring in his step and you know, he was he was trying to do something, but I, I could see it a little bit. I could see the wheels turning slightly when Silverberg was out there. And I heard some of the cheers from the fans when Silverberg went out on the ice. So that was really cool as well. And on that fan appreciation night, um, Silfy showed his appreciation. A really cool scene, the photo at the end of everything where you had the Silverberg family out there with the rest of the Ducks roster. Just a neat moment all around. All right, we're going to head into the intermission, and I will talk about the game, the game between the Ducks and the Flames. We'll get to that on the other side. Now, a brief word from Indeed. And, you know, Indeed is the hiring platform where you can attract, interview, and hire all in one place. Finds top talent fast with Indeed's suite of powerful hiring tools like matching, assessments, and virtual interviews. With Indeed, matching as soon as you sponsor a post, you get a short list of quality candidates whose resumes on Indeed match your job description and boom, hiring at warp speed. Join over 3 million businesses worldwide using Indeed to hire great talent fast. Indeed knows when you're growing your own business, you have to make every dollar count. That's why with Indeed, you only pay for the quality applications that match your must-have job requirements. Visit Indeed.com slash locked on to start hiring right now. Indeed.com slash locked on. Terms and conditions apply. Cost per application pricing not available for everyone. Need to hire? You need Indeed. We're also brought to you by Factor Meals. Eat stress-free this spring with Factor's delicious, ready-to-eat meals. Every fresh, never-frozen meal is chef-crafted, dietitian approved and ready-to-eat in just two short minutes. Choose from a weekly menu of 35 options, including Calorie Smart, Keto, Protein Plus, or Vegan and Veggie. Also discover more than the 60 add-ons every week, like breakfast, on-the-go lunch, snacks, and beverages to help you stay fueled and feel good all day long. So what are you waiting for? Get started tonight and fuel up your springtime goals. Head to factormeals.com slash locked on NHL 50 and use code locked on NHL 50 to get half off your first box plus 20%. Yeah, 20% off your next box. That's code locked on NHL 50 at factormeals.com slash locked on NHL 50 for half off your first box, 20% off your next box while your subscription is active from Factor Meals. All right, we're here at Acrisure Arena, home of the Coachella Valley Firebirds. And I will talk about the Firebirds and the goals on a future podcast. Just a reminder, folks, this is a bonus episode. The goals are here this Sunday. So for those of you that want to come out and support the the Ducklings, it's Goals versus Firebirds this Sunday here at Acrisure Arena. So you can check out the future of the Ducks and see who else you really like. I mean, Sasha Pastujov is on the team, Chase DeLeo. We love Chase DeLeo, the La Mirada native, Pavel Regenda, and a slew of others. So, you know, if you want to come on down, let me know, say hi, and cheer on your San Diego goals. 
So let's talk about that game between the Calgary Flames, not the Wranglers, the Flames, and the Anaheim Ducks. This one was no contest at the beginning. Flames came out firing, pun intended, for the first couple of periods where they put up just four goals in the first two periods and just let them rip. Andrew Mangiapane, the bread man, got a shorty to start things off. And then Andre Kuzmenko in the second had a power play goal. Also, Kadri and Zeri scored for the Flames. So after two periods, it was 4 nothing Calgary right away. And then the Ducks started coming back, and they do what they sometimes do. They just claw their way back, little by little by little. And this is where all the action took place, and this is what I want to focus on the most. I'm going to say it. You know what I'm going to say. Let the kids play. Yeah. And the Ducks let the kids play. In the midst of all the Jakob Silverberg hoopla, uh, we forgot that Sam Colangelo made his National Hockey League debut. Only nine days. Is it really nine days? That's it? Yeah. <laughs> nine days after Sam Colangelo made his AHL debut, he makes his NHL debut at the Ponda on the Ducks' final home game of the season. So Sam Colangelo was out there, and he did the dirty work. And I love Colangelo's game. I talked about Colangelo in detail on a previous Goals podcast, so if you want to hear that, I have my thoughts on Sam Colangelo. Pretty much the same thing here is, you know, he likes to get to the dirty areas, and he will get to the front of the net and make his presence known. And that's exactly what happens to get his first National Hockey League goal in his debut. Just like his goals debut, he scored in that. His Ducks debut, he scored in that as well. So that made it a 4-1 Calgary game. And this was in front of his entire family in Anaheim. So congratulations, Sam Colangelo, on getting your first in the National Hockey League. And then a few minutes after that, it was Italian goals. Frank Vetrano now at 34 goals this season. Remember when I said about two weeks ago or even last week that I predicted that Frank Vetrano could get 35 goals? Well, he's close. He's one goal away from 35. I think he will get there. In fact, I'm going to predict it right now. But let's not talk about the goal. Let's talk about the pass. The pass that led to the goal from the one and only Trevor Zegris. Yes, he's a trick shot merchant, according to some. But you know what? We've got to talk about his passing. We know he's had a good passing game. We've known that since he won gold with the U.S. at World Juniors. Heck, we knew that the year before when Trevor Zegras almost, I think he tied for the team lead in points, no goals, all assists in the previous WJC. So we know Z can find his teammates and... Trevor Zegers was behind the net, got a defender to bite and try to get, like, draw him off. And what did Z do? He had a nifty behind the back kind of spin pass just past the goal mouth and fed it right to Frank Vetrano. That was a perfect back feed, like a spin ramen, like, not a no look, kind of a no look feed to Frank Vetrano. So, as much as we liked the goal, the pass was better it was pristine so that made it 4-2 calgary and then less than a minute later olin zellweger scored it from a distance and that all of a sudden made it 4-3 calgary and the crowd got back into it the ducks players they were going nuts so you had sam colangelo and olin zellweger each scoring goals so you know what i'll yell it one more time let the kids play and then the Ducks allowed a power play goal, as they always do. The Ducks allowed two power play goals in this one. Calgary 2 for 5. We're back to our old habits. The Ducks taking penalties that they should not be taking because we've seen this happen over and over and over again. Radko Gudis with a not good penalty. So that made it 5-3 to three Calgary. And then Kuzmenko completed the hat trick just a couple minutes after that. So your final score... 6-3 to three in front of a big crowd at the Ponda. But, I mean, this game had no relevance in the standings, none at all. Calgary, they're out of it. So this was all about the kids letting them play. But this was about Jakob Silverberg.
So all in all, it was a whatever game. I mean, Ducks lost, and we have two games left on the road. Now, I do want to talk about those two games on the road because I think this is very important. The two games on the road, tonight at Staples Center against the Los Angeles Kings, I bet, I bet Sylphie's going to play in that game. And this was a, another post-game quote from Derek Lee. So once again, just kind of, you know, hat tip to Derek Lee on getting the post-game quotes. And he even talked about those last couple of games and he says the plan is to play in the last two games of the season both on the road but that ultimately it's up to the coaching staff to decide his quote quote i'm still excited to play haven't put too much thought into it not sure end quote all right so (laughs) he's not sure i would like to see him play at least the game in los angeles because Even though there's the rivalry between the Ducks and the Kings, and I know a lot of Ducks fans hate, hate, hate the Los Angeles Kings, and I get it. I get the hate. But go with me on this. There's a mutual respect between the Kings and the Ducks, and between the Kings, like, a good portion, not all of them, but a portion of the Kings fans and a portion of the Ducks fans, there is that respect there. And this goes back, and I still think about this to this day. I go back to 2014, that playoff series between the Ducks and the Kings. And even though the Ducks lost in Game 7 at home to Los Angeles, that was the final game for Temu Solani. And I will never forget this. Both the Ducks and the Kings fans united and joined in the chant together of thank you, Tamu, like every everybody said thank you, Tamu. Even on the Kings watch parties, they were saying thank you, Tamu. So to me, that shows a sign of respect. Um, I think about Ryan Getzloff and his final games. One of the final games that Getzy played was against the Los Angeles Kings. And the Kings fans all applauded when Getzy stayed out there. And he shook he shook the hands with every Kings player, like every Kings player made it a point to shake his hand and make a line down the line. I still thought that was really cool. So yes, there's a rivalry, but at least the players understand the importance of a franchise player. So to me, that's why I will at least have respect as far as the players are concerned. I will always have respect for the rivalry. And that's kind of what I'm hoping happens on Saturday night's game. Like, ideally, it doesn't matter because the Kings have clinched a playoff spot. So there's really no point as far as standings are concerned. But win or lose, regardless of what happens, I hope that Sophie plays. And I hope that the Kings all line up and shake his hand and give him a nice little salute after the game and I I think that would just be a classy gesture so Kings fans Kings make it classy I hope that's what happens and I think I'm going to end on that note kind of a positive note but I'm going to end there so once again thanks for checking in on this bonus episode and we'll be back on Monday to talk about that Kings and Ducks game so you know make sure you're subscribed to the YouTube channel make sure you are locked in wherever you get your audio feeds And once again, just thank you all so much. Don't forget, this podcast is free and available across all platforms, including Stitcher, Spotify, Odyssey, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts. We're ad-free on Amazon, and I mentioned YouTube. Hit the subscribe button. Go ahead and do do it right now. I'll wait. I'll wait a few seconds. Have you done it yet? Yeah, it's, it's locked on. Locked on Anaheim Ducks. Yep, that's it. Right there. Subscribe, subscribe. There we go. All right. Thank you for subscribing. Oh, yeah. Also, check out the Locked On Sports channel, the 24-7 channel on YouTube. So check that one out as well. Uh, What else? Ad-free, YouTube, all that jazz. Oh, yeah. Also on SiriusXM. You can follow me on X or Twitter at StimpyJD. The show's X or Twitter is at LO underscore Ducks. And you can email me at LockedOnAnaheimDucks at gmail.com. 
and I'm not going to open up the mailbag yet, but if you want to send me your questions, feel free. Feel free to send in your questions. And I think I'm going to do this, you know, after the season ends. And once again, thank you all for your continued support. It is so greatly appreciated. For Locked on Anaheim Ducks, I'm Jason J.D. Hernandez saying have a great rest of the weekend, folks. Please remember to be safe out there. Please be kind to one another. Be respectful. And Ducks fly together.